Hey, hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. We're starting 3-1 and we have some piranha plants acting as soft blocks. Yeah, I know they're just supposed to be little Venus flytraps, but dang it! Those things look so much like piranha plants and I love when you blast them how their teeth, like they seem to sear and then their teeth like fall out of their mouth as if the teeth didn't get caught in the blast. Well, they did get kept caught in the blast, but I mean that you know, it's like they have the added effect of that the teeth do not get bl Oh shoot, I didn't notice the portal there. <laughs> that the teeth are not affected by explosions. By the way, those odd turtle-like things that walk... Well, turtles do walk, but I mean on two legs. <laughs> oh my goodness, red bombs! These things are wicked awesome. Grab it, drop a bomb, it's blood red. And it goes straight through soft blocks. You don't have to destroy one at a time now. But though, as I was saying about those turtle guys, they home in on you, so you have to worry about that now. And there's going to be a lot of those guys as you go. In fact, there's going to be a lot of enemies that home in on you, and that's more of the strategic aspect of this game. And they all react differently as well. Those shelled enemies that we've seen before, I, I had no trouble destroying. I don't think they home in on you at all. Or at least... That's what I observe. I haven't, I haven't really seen anything like that from them whatsoever. Oh, we got ourselves a combination of stuff this time. Alright, so the pirate shells down there can be destroyed like that with the awesome red bombs. As I said, those things cut through walls so quickly. Um, wait, I'd actually like to get your attention. You know, I can just do like this, couldn't I? <laughs> yeah, that, that seems good to me. I will just take care of you like so. There we go! <laughs> um, for the rest of them, I think that blue one down there, I'm going to strategically attack from behind the enemy lines there. <laughs> well, okay, the enemy is there, but I mean that I can pierce through their defenses. I'm going to lead him up there just because he'll sort of be in my way otherwise. Um, yeah, I don't think that guy homes in on you at all. Just another basic touch the wall and turn direction type of enemy. You, turn there, get blasted. Now come back, thank you. And get blasted once again. Delightful, thank you for cooperating with me. I'm sorry you had to die though, but that's just how things go. <laughs> that vest is completely useless at this point. Well, unless I somehow get caught in my own bomb blast, but I just don't see that happening all that often unless I mess with the control pad again. Or an enemy, you know, like, tricks me into reacting off of instinct and forgetting about my bomb. Oh, and I believe those turtle guys also avoid your explosions. See those... These pancake UFO guy things, I just don't see their significance. I mean, they turn invisible when they turn all square, and... Oh, this thing is a maximum fire power-up. Grab that and watch your bomb blast shoot across the screen, for it maximizes it completely. Like, if I put a bomb all the way over here, you'll be able to see just how many squares it goes across. So you went all the way from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, to there. So it isn't indeed a 9 square maximum. Oh wait, wait, was that, was that actually 10? Yeah, it is actually 10 squares as the max, so that's handy. <laughs> Why did I think 9 was the max? I, I'm, I might be thinking about Super Bomberman 2, because I know 9 was the max in that one. Uh, where is the portal to the exit? Well, wherever it is, it's in a safe spot that I can blast without, you know, blast the other stuff without hitting the portal. It's kind of odd that I find the portal last. I usually find it pretty quickly. Industrial site time! These weird industrial construction workers, guys, I don't, I don't really think they home in on you, but they do react pretty awkwardly, and again, I panicked with the D-pad. <laughs> And I lost my red bombs. No! That makes me so sad. I love the red bombs. I guess you could call them like cherry bombs in a way because they're coloring. Ooh! That one, that, the remote control is actually a little better than the red bomb, I think, in most situations. Even though the red bomb 
is, as you've seen, pretty broken. And I, since I lost that a max fire power up as well, the max fire power up doesn't actually. I mean, it isn't treated by the game's mechanics like a normal fire power up where it gets saved even if you die once. But what happens is that it's. It's a temporary power-up for if you do die, you lose all the extra fire power that you got from that maximum fire power-up. It's not really all that much of a big deal since the blast radius that I have right now is more than enough for most situations. Though it would be nice to, you know, crisscross right over an entire level as I showed you before. Um, I'm going to see... okay. Nothing more to see here, kids. I think those blue top enemy guys also sort of home in on you a little bit. Um, these bull guys, if they see you, they will charge for you. I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate that here. Did you, did you see that little reaction that it did over there? It does that. If it sees you, it'll charge at max. Well, I was gonna say maximum speed, but its maximum speed is a lot slower than you with your roller skate power-ups. <laughs> it only takes one hit to kill these things, but there are a uh, stronger variation of them later in the game, so you can't be quite as reckless. Hello, Extra Life. Uh, extra Lives, they don't come all that often, They also, but, uh, but they're definitely worth getting because of the fact that if you lose all your lives and get a game over, as I said, your stats reset, so you definitely don't want that as your stats are pretty much everything in getting through things quickly. Um, should I...? Yeah, what the heck. I'll just blast those... nothing, okay. Happy days! <laughs> I'm getting through these stages awfully fast. All these chameleon guys, they blend into... well, they, I shouldn't say they blend into the environment. They look like other... I think their purpose is for two-player games, so that it tricks you, or I should say it tricks your partner into thinking that they are a safe enemy to this, I mean, a, a safe person to, you know, walk past normally, because, you know, you, you normally can't get hurt by your uh, bombing buddy in two-player mode just by touching them, but if you should touch an enemy, of course you do die, and if you think the enemy is your partner, uh, you won't be able to pass through, and, uh, through them as you normally would. Um, these chameleon guys take one hit when they're in chameleon head mode, but when they are... Did you just lick? <laughs> but when they are... Why did I drop a bomb there? Why did I drop a bomb there? But when they are in Bomberman camouflage mode, they take three hits, if I'm not mistaken. But I, I just wait for them to turn back into the chameleon head just to give myself an easier time. Clearly, you aren't going to be tricked by those things, you know, if you are playing by yourself, but the real power is in the two-player mode, which just is not going to happen since I play all my walkthroughs solo. Alright, next one. Bulls plus chameleons. It is a match made in heaven. Actually, maybe not. They're pretty weak enemies overall. <laughs> And what, what did I destroy down there? I wasn't paying attention to, to whatever item appeared down there. I hope it wasn't something that I wanted. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. Oh, a thing that you should worry about if you have red bombs, I forgot to mention that when I had them, is if you see a portal, do not put a bomb behind soft blocks and the portal because the soft blocks will of course not block the bomb blast from reaching the portal. But that should be implied anyway, you know, just by the way the bomb blasts work when they are in red bomb mode. Uh, cherry bomb mode. <laughs> and that's it? Okay, let's go! And now, we meet... A guy of mystery. As I said, I'm not gonna explain the, the storyline to you guys, but he does play a... Um, a roll into the plot. Pay attention to which arm is moving, I mean, which claw opens, because what'll happen is that he's going to shoot that arm forward as he moves left and right. I just, And he also shoots these little shark guys out, which I, I don't think they home in on you, they just sort of move around the outer edges. 
they don't do all that much other than that. <laughs> like, I don't really have much more to say about the land sharks there, and the boss is uh, pretty easy as you can tell, uh, especially if you have remote control bombs like I do, because otherwise you'd have to time your bomb blast for whenever he moves across your blast radius. Uh, that, that would get kind of annoying, but at the same time, he doesn't do a very good job of hitting you. Because <laughs> his attacks are so predictable. He's... Because he's so predictable, I, I could sort of compare him to Wispy Woods in terms of boss easiness because of that. But, as I said, he does play a role in this story, and whatever this story is, is up to you to interpret, at least until I get to the final part where I explain it all to you. Don't know, uh, I mean, if you're wondering why I'm doing that, I'll explain that later as well. Uh, okay. Just a little bit more, I feel, will do it, I think. He takes a lot of hits, apparently. Wait, wait, wait! Yeah! Now, who are these bomber buddies? You will perhaps know later. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot! Did not mean to do that wrong button. <laughs> I want to save here. And I'm going to end off the parts. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next part.